To be successful in chemistry, you have to be able to figure out the charge for ions. By the end of this video, you'll be able to find the charge for ions of the individual elements and for polyatomic ions. We can tell if something is an ion because it has a charge after it. Na+, that's the sodium ion. We also have Cl-, that's the chloride ion. These are individual elements, like oxygen, the oxide ion. These here, with more than one element, those are called polyatomic ions. Note that when we write charge, if it's 1 plus, we just write plus, or if it's 1 minus, we just write minus. But if we have a number like 2, we put the negative sign after the number. And that's just the way we do it for ions. So this video is about determining the charge on ions. So we're not going to discuss how they form or valence electrons or how they react. Our goal is to be able to figure out ionic charge. So let's look at ions of single elements first, then we'll look at polyatomic ions. We can use this simple periodic table here to remember charge. Group 1, that's 1 plus. Group 2, 2 plus. And as we go across, we go up to 4 plus, and then we start going down. 3 minus, 2 minus, 1 minus. And the noble gases, they don't have charge. They're neutral, so we have a zero. This general version works for most chemistry, but it's a little bit of an oversimplification. A more detailed periodic table for ionic charge, that would look like this. It's the same general trend, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus. We don't have anything in the 4 plus, but then we go 3 minus, 2 minus, 1 minus, 0. Same thing, but there are a lot of exceptions. You see, we don't know the charge on these. And these transition metals, we also don't know the charge on those, except for zinc, silver, and cadmium. So pause and find the ionic charge for these elements. Magnesium, that's right here, and it's in group 2. So when it bonds or forms ions, it'll have a 2 plus charge. Sulfur over here, group 6, sometimes called 16, that'll have a 2 minus charge. Neon, that's a noble gas, so it won't have any charge, and we'll just leave it like it is. Rubidium, that's over here in group 1, and we're just going to write plus, and that'll mean 1 plus. It's important to practice this, so give these a try. Okay, one more time. This time, though, I removed the charges from the periodic table. Give it a try. For transition metals, those are the metals right here in the middle of the periodic table, and these are some of the near transition metals. We don't know what the charge is. It can have variable charges, different charges. The way we do it, though, is we look at what it's bonded to to figure the charge out. So let's try this. We have two neutral compounds here, FeCl2 and FeCl3. We know they're neutral because there's no charges written after them. So we know that chlorine has a charge of 1 minus. And we have two of them. So this total here is going to be 2 minus. Therefore, the iron, it has to be 2 plus. So that's its ionic charge when it's bonded to this chlorine in FeCl2. It's called iron 2 chloride because of the charge. For FeCl3, again, the chlorine, that has a 1 minus charge. So we have three of them. This will have to be 3 plus. We call this iron 3 chloride. So pause and give this one a try. So in this case, we have fluorine. That's a halogen. It's in group 17, sometimes called 7A. It has a 1 minus charge. But we have two of them. So the total charge is 2 minus. That means the copper has to be 2 plus, And we call it copper 2 fluoride. Note that the overall compound is neutral because all the charges add up to zero. But each individual ion, it has its charge. And that plus and those minuses, they attract each other. Those ions attract to form an ionic bond. So now you know how to figure out the charge for ions of individual elements. Let's look at some polyatomic ions. For the polyatomic ions, they have more than one atom, like NH4+. We have nitrogen and four hydrogens. You can kind of consider them like a molecule with a charge. There's two ways to find the charge on polyatomic ions. The first is just to memorize them. This is actually often required, so talk to your teacher. See if you need to memorize them. The other is you look them up on a chart. Some teachers allow you to have this chart on tests and quizzes. At the minimum, I recommend you memorize the nitrate ion, the hydroxide ion, carbonate, sulfate, and phosphate. 
those at the minimum. That'll save you a lot of time when you're taking a test or trying to get your homework done. Most of the ions, they're negative, so they'll bond to metals. There are a few exceptions. The big one is NH4+, the ammonium ion, another one you should memorize. The ammonium ion, that's a positive ion, so it'll bond to negative ions, usually non-metals. The hydronium ion is also another one that you may want to remember. Let's take a look what happens when we have a polyatomic ion attached to a transition metal. So here we have iron attached to SO4. So if we know the charge on SO4, we can figure the charge out on the iron, the transition metal, iron. So we find our sulfate down here and sulfate, 2 minus. So we can write that there. That means this iron has to be 2 plus for this to be a neutral molecule. Because of that, we call this iron 2 sulfate. So pause and give this one a try. Copper is a transition metal, so we don't know the charge on that. But the nitrate, NO3, we look down here. Here's the nitrate ion. It has a negative charge, so a 1 minus. I have two of these. That means in order for this to be a neutral molecule, I'll need to have a 2 plus. That makes this copper 2 nitrate. And the 2 reflects the positive charge on the transition metal. Let's wrap up with just a little bit of practice here. Write the charge on each one of these when it forms ions. Barium is group 2, 2 plus. Helium, a noble gas, it has no charge, so we don't write anything. Group 1 for a hydrogen, so that has a plus. The nitrate ion, hopefully you can remember that the nitrate ion, that's NO3 minus, good one to remember. Same for the sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus. And then nitrogen right here, that is 3 minus. This is Dr. B with how to figure out the charges on ions. Thanks for watching.